Hello, everyone, and welcome back to yet another season on Health from Home. With these sessions, we aim to give you guidance with the help of our experts on fitness, nutrition, mental well-being, and how to manage lifestyle conditions such as diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol, and other diseases. We sincerely hope that you and your families are finding these sessions helpful. Today's session is actually a special one. The much-awaited monsoons are here, and I can hear the pitter-patter raindrops as the background music. So while... Uh, they are definitely a respite from the sweltering summer heat. We got to be careful of various illnesses it brings along like dengue, malaria, cholera and others. It's best to take the right precautions and also stay active, eat healthy, build your immunity to protect yourself against these illnesses. So we have with us today a monsoon family expert, Ms. Riddhi Deora. A parenting coach and influencer, popularly known as Mom on Skates. She founded the company Easy Parenting Hub, under which she creates several parenting courses such as mindful parenting, active parenting, hero method of parenting with your child, easy stress management, audio visual cards, and many more. She also hosts parenting classes across the globe and conducts workshops for corporates and schools. You can find her on our active living community as well. Today, she will share with us the secrets on how to keep your family fit, healthy, and safe during monsoons. Welcome to Health From Home, Riddhi. Yes, thank you so much for that beautiful introduction, Jabji. And uh, it's a pleasure being here. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Riddhi, monsoons are here. Yes. And we all love lazing in those <laughs> rainy mornings. So tell us right. how you start your day. So I, I'm a very early riser. So I usually wake up very early and everybody is sleeping. And that's like those two hours are like golden hours for me. And that's when I do like, you know, that's like proper self-care happening. And if I don't get those two hours, I feel like really like unproductive during the day. So this is what I do. So the first thing I feel it's very important to, you know, have the right thing when you get up. So I have lemon water with honey. That's how I start. And then I do yoga and it's an online uh, recorded version that I follow. And it's a beautiful series that I do. And uh, so that's like that takes around 35 to 40 minutes. And after that, I do 20 minutes of reading. And uh, this I've been doing for many years. And uh, usually, you know, you can read 20 to 30 pages, which is, I feel, a good way to start like a, with a positive message and you're like set for the day on a positive note because I read a lot of self-help books or true stories about entrepreneurs and stuff. So that's uh, the third thing that I do. And then, you know, by the time I'm done all this, uh, my family starts to rise and uh, that's when I uh, become a mom and I'm looking after weed and I'm looking after my husband and all of that. And, um, so yeah, that's what I do. And then I do a lot of puja mantras and chanting and yeah, so that's how my day starts. And I feel it's very important for all of us to have, you know, a few things that we do after we wake up and I feel it really sets your day on a very, very productive note. And if you're not doing it now, I think it's a very, very good time to start and it doesn't have to be one hour, two hour. You know, a small start is also a very good start. You know, sometimes we spend so much time thinking that, you know, I'm going to do it, do it. And we end up doing nothing. So I feel that it's better to, you know, do a small amount rather than making big plans. So when I started, you know, I started like almost 15 years back and it was a very small start. You know, I used to just get up and I used to walk for 10, 15 minutes and I used to read a few pages. And now I have this whole, you know, like thing that goes on for two, two hours. And once you're in that mode, you'll start, you'll want more of it. So I feel that you should definitely, you know, spend at least 15, 20 minutes in the morning trying to connect with yourself, trying to understand that, you know, whether you're on the right track, whether this is what you really want to do with your life. And uh, also you can watch positive videos on YouTube. There are so many be beautiful videos by Gaur, Gopal Das, Guru Shivani, you know, these uh, videos, opera and I feel that one positive message in the morning can really, you know, help you uh, be prepared for the day on a very, very positive note. So I feel that's what I do. And if you, some of you who are watching this are not doing it, I think you should have at least 10 minutes 
that you do something productive for yourself and you're not thinking about anybody else when you're doing this so yes so that's what i do that's amazing uh, in fact uh, a lot of us keep making plans and goals right and often miss out that it's imp- the beginning is important we somewhere got to start maybe with that 15 minutes of exercise and time to self so it's right. an important one and uh, it's great that you're doing it and i'm sure lots of people today are right. more motivated for it yes the first step is always the most difficult step like you rightly mentioned yeah and so really monsoons are about spending time indoors eating those pakora jalebi <laughs> yummy monsoon treats and totally forget about exercising even right. sometimes you know getting out of bed is like a huge deal how do you motivate your family to stay fit what are the exercises you guys do at home to stay fit or you move out how do you do right. it right so so during monsoons usually you know when it's raining it's difficult to actually step out so you have to try and plan things indoor so like i said you know it's like of course you know this is what we do during monsoon but even during the year this is something that you could do so i love to walk and that is something that i've been doing for a really long time so even if i can't step out and go out for a walk then i definitely you know wear my sports shoes and i'm walking inside the house so you know you have to log that 35 to 40 minutes where you consciously decide that i'm not going to sit i'm going to be moving around and you know that also really helps just wearing those shoes can make a lot of difference so that is something that i do and then i do yoga and veer has been watching me and he is also doing yoga with me now and uh, my husband he uh, does uh, you know he's doing weights and he's doing proper gym and everything and uh, initially he used to go out but in an environment which was indoor so i didn't don't think that monsoon really had an impact there but now because we are all home so now his workout is also at home so i think everybody you know if everybody around you is doing something you're actually motivating each other and you know some days when i don't feel like doing it you know i see my husband doing it and you know there's this guilt inside that you know i didn't do yoga i think he's still doing it i'll also just quickly do it for 5 10 minutes and it's the same for my husband you know when he looks at me doing it he's got you know you are actually encouraging each other and motivating each other to do it and um, and like it's a family me, habit that exactly it's like the environment that you're living in basically so if you can create that environment for your in your house i feel that's great and uh, kids especially kids i think they learn a lot through observation you don't have to teach them anything you know they are like always always watching you so mm-hmm. like we like my son his name is veer and uh, so i've never really told him that you know you should work out or you should do yoga mm-hmm. with me or you should work out like your daddy is working out but they want to do what parents are doing so you know if you are doing something they you'll find them next to you doing it and it's hilarious to watch him do kapal bhati and alom bilo he tries to do it and it's uh, quite uh, funny so i think just start you know stop thinking get into the action mode and start and the best way to get others to do it is not through force not by forcing them but mm-hmm. through inspiration you know like you can tell anybody 100000 times that you know this is something that you should do you must do but they're not going to do it because unless you can really inspire them to do it it has to be an internal decision that they make you know you cannot like you know anything that's external and forced from the outside is very temporary you know yeah. so let's say if i force you to work out i'm living with you and i'm forcing you to do it the minute i am out of the house or i'm not with you or i'm on a holiday you're not going to work out on those days because mm-hmm. you know you are doing it out of external force or fear but when i can really inspire you and motivate you to do it yourself irrespective of whether i'm there or not there you will still do it Yeah. so i feel uh, for any change to happen or for you to bring about any change in the house it has to be through inspiration and not through uh, force or compulsion i feel where do you find inspiration from so of course so as people i think most of what we get inspired by is the uh, kind of people that we are living with 
the environment, the books that you're reading. I, my parents have been a huge, huge influence on me. And then I have four siblings. So they have really had a huge impact on my personality. I feel. Because when you have a lot of siblings, one thing that happens is you do something weird. They'll, def- they'll be the first people to point out, you know, or if you're speaking or you're pronouncing something uh, wrong, no, anybody, you know, people will think 100 times before they correct you, but siblings That's are shameless. Me. Siblings, they'll just correct you in front of everyone. So I feel that um, every person that you meet inspires you in some way. And if you are always looking to learn, and if you're a lifelong learner, and if you're looking at people to find the good in them, it's an ongoing journey and you're constantly learning from everyone. So, you know, like, like we're having this life and I'm learning that, you know, you're always smiling. So that is a very nice and tells a lot about the person you are. So when you watch someone, there's a lot that you can still learn even without having a proper conversation with that person. So I feel that if your uh, senses are active and if you are really wanting to learn and get inspired, you can really uh, get inspired from anything and everyone. That's amazing. So you mentioned Riddhi that your son has started following you guys. But did you have to really start with some kind of activities with him, some easy sort of yoga moves, uh, so to say, or how did you get him into that habit? So yes, so of course, as far as like, you know, kids are concerned. So once, you know, they always want to do what parents are doing and they try to follow you. But a little encouragement from the parent can really go a long way. Because kids are very moody, you know, it's like it's it has to be very consistent also. So, you know, if I'm doing yoga, some days he might come and sit next to me and copy me. Some days he might choose not to do it, you know, depending on his mood, on how he's feeling. But, you know, as a parent, I have to actually uh, emphasize and tell him that, you know, this is important. Let's do it. So you have to make sure that you're also giving that encouragement to your child. And encouraging them to be consistent about whatever it is that they're doing. And uh, if you're doing it properly, not doing it for too long, not having unrealistic expectations from them that, you know, you should sit and do yoga for one hour with me. Obviously, that is something that's not going to happen. But if you can plan out like four or five asanas, which your child can actually do for 10, 15 minutes, that's a very good start for a three three to four year old child. So uh, that's what we do. Then we do a lot of activities during monsoon, especially because you cannot step out. And kids are like, you know, they have so much energy, excess energy. And sometimes I'm amazed by the amount of energy that they have. So you really have to bring bring the playground inside because you can't send the child. After COVID, this has happened. People had to bring the playground in the house because there are a lot of energy and you need to constantly keep them busy. That's true. And I feel that, you know, it also requires a change in the mindset of the parent, you know, because you have to be more flexible. Mm -hmm. You have to be more tolerant. And if you have cleanliness issues, you have to relax them a little, you know, because if you are not tolerant and you have those irrational beliefs that my house should always be clean and it should be absolutely shining all the time, then, you know, you're not giving that space to your child. So I have major OCD, but after I've become a parent, I've become a lot, lot tolerant. Uh, and uh, I'm allowing my child to actually, you know, leave a few things here and there. And I'm not constantly cleaning. Initially, the first few months, I was constantly in that cleaning mode, picking up things, putting it back. In place. It gets very exhausting. And then, you know, I sat down with my husband and he was like, you know, I understand that this is a problem. But you have to make it simple for yourself. You cannot be doing this all day. And then we decided, okay, at this time, once everything is done, that's when I'm going to actually start cleaning the house and make sure that everything is fine. And that just that one small change made things so much better for me. So I think, yes, of course, you know, and then we do a lot of games like, you know, sack potato race, spoon potato race. And then, you know, like I sometimes put letters on the other side and ask him to go run and tell me which letter. So I'll tell him, go tap letter A or tap letter B. So he's going to go run. Then we do treasure hunt with letters and numbers. You just write numbers, put it in different corners of the house. And then I just tell him that, can you go find letter A for me? Can you go find letter B for me? And uh, and sometimes you can also do spellings with these words. So mm-hmm. there's a lot that you can do with your child when it comes to getting, they're anyway very active. So now you have to actually use all that excess energy and channelize it in a productive uh, uh, way. 
and you can do a lot of these activities that's what i do and these activities don't take any time like you know literally you know just take white paper must, right and i must say they sound a lot of fun yes of course and that's you know and the best learning happens when they are playing and you know if they are engaged and if they are entertained they are not bored and if they are not bored they are not clingy and cranky and that's what every parent wants that you know my child is a happy child and my child is not sticking to me all the time so if you can really entertain them keep them engaged and uh, have some small small creative activities prepared for them which also involves a lot of movement and motion and uh, i feel you're sorted and the child is happy you're happy and actually i'm great that i'm glad that you mentioned this because uh, i'm i have a huge community of parents and during covid the most important problem has been obesity you know kids are becoming overweight because they're eating well <laughs> and Yes, eating well. Also, because we are cooking so much, because the whole house is there. You know, if yeah. you are the only person home, so my husband used to go to work, my child used to go to school, and I was the only person home. Then you can cook something very simple. But when you have to feed well, people, yeah. we all became master chefs also during those <laughs> <our> times. <laughs> right, right. So it's very important that you get those activities inside. Relax your uh, beliefs about keeping the house. You know, like. keeping the toys in space like cleanliness is different from you know keeping uh, you know clean house is definitely important but what i mean is that you know toys lying around and all don't be very paranoid about picking it up all the time so i think uh, it's definitely a very active household i would say my house child is always running and we are doing mostly we work out in the morning and after that we are working that's amazing and like i said with the uh, monsoons are for yummy treats So, what are some of those things that your family loves, and what are those special recipes that are healthy yet tasty that you can share with us? So, we actually eat a lot, <laughs> and we have four meals and snacks. But we keep every meal very light, you know, like we don't eat too much. So, we eat frequently, but uh, the meals are very the portion size is small, and the free and the it's not very heavy. So, during monsoons, I think atta ka laddu is. very yummy yeah. then gajar ka halwa is good and if you want like simple snack ideas then uh, like uh, dal makhana it's called fox nut in english mm -hmm. and uh, moody and uh, puff rice for those who don't know moody puff rice and i'm giving the english name so that they can actually look up if they want to and then there is uh, churwa you mm -hmm. know then uh, so these and then beetroot cutlets banana chips pakoras like you mentioned in the beginning you know that's a treat when during monsoons but you can't have pakoras every day like you know once in two weeks is fine even though you want to but i think it's very important that you control and don't have it every day and i think these are a few top snacks that we have sometimes we make suji ka chilla in the evening mm -hmm. which is very very uh, healthy you know you can put a lot of veggies like carrots and very very good for mm -hmm. kids Yes, even idli you can make very simple. You know these things are very simple. Suji ka chilla, idli. If you have dal, you know moong dal. Usko bhiga ke you can make moong dal ka chilla. Mm. That's also very healthy. And hara moong ka chilla is also tasty. And you know kids like colorful foods. You know green green chilla. Sometimes you can give them orange chilla. Sometimes you can give dosa. And if you really want to treat your child, you can give pancake. So because these are all very easy things to make. They're e healthy also. and uh, this is what we mostly like have and soup also but yeah later like maybe after uh, snacks like before dinner you can have a nice healthy soup with your family and during monsoon you can have like garlic soup you can have tomato soup there's this uh, uh, halwa that i make it's called ginger turmeric halwa wow. and you make it with ginger turmeric and uh, jaggery and mm. uh, it's uh, more than tasty i feel like it's very healthy so you know it's like maybe of course nice. gajar ka halwa would be tastier but yeah. this is like a very very good for your immunity and you know because it really helps you fight all that cold flu viral and all that that comes with free with monsoon <laughs> so it's very very good and you can have very small quantity you can make it and you can keep it in the refrigerator and you can just bring it out and heat it and you can have one or two spoons but it's very very good for your immunity so good. that is ginger right but uh, your son loves it 
so of course you know kids don't love anything that's very healthy they always want to go for the tastier option but it is a little effort to feed them but they get used to it you know once you feed like anything you feed them first time you know they'll be like what is this you know i don't like it but if you give it to them consistently you have to take a little effort but once they have it they understand you know this is something that i have to have every day and then they start eating so i think uh, it's uh, you have to try you know with kids you can never be sure every child is different temperament different attitude different taste different so you have to actually try with your child and see if they like it that's true and uh, also with the monsoons are especially hard on children's health immunity can get really low it can lead to a lot of diseases uh what are some of the immuno boosting hacks that you can try uh, that one can try and uh, not just for children but for the entire family right so i'll give you like some basic precautions that you should like have as parents so mm-hmm. first is you know get the annual viral shot for sure you know the vaccine that is very important because uh, believe you me like a lot of parents skip it so like even though they know it's very important they avoid it or they postpone it or it's delayed and you know you don't know when it's going to come so it's always good to be prepared and get the shot on time so it's important that you get the annual vaccine and then the second thing is that you know you can have uh, this thing like you know give some kada or something in the evening and uh, you very simple you know all these things don't take any time and if you are like the women in the house it's very important that you do do these small small things because that's going to save you a lot of time because if something happens you have to really go all out and do everything so if you take all these precautions you can really uh, save a lot of energy so kara mein you can just put i put ginger a little uh, uh, black pepper then you can put tulsi and you can also uh, put uh, this thing uh, cinnamon stick and then you just boil it on the stove if you want you can for the color you can put a little tea leaves like green tea or any tea that of your choice and then you just boil it for some time and then you sieve it and give it to your family for small kids you can cool cool it down a little because too hot they can't have and uh, just give it to your entire family and this will not take more than 5 to 6 minutes to prepare and give and to consume so very very simple hack so the simpler you keep it the better it is and then uh, steam inhalation is good and now it's become so easy you know you get those steam machines just have to put some water plug it in and just take it you know so uh, this is something that we do twice a day at least like morning and evening before going to bed so it's very healthy and don't overdo it also okay because it's not very good for your uh, trachea that you are taking steam all the time so every time i think maximum 2 and a half 3 minutes twice a day that's uh, something that you can do and then uh, the other thing that you can do is you can actually make them wear full sleeves clothes and pants to ensure because mosquitoes are the carrier for a lot of these diseases so to protect them from mosquitoes you can actually make them wear you know and to keep them warm also full sleeves uh, uh like you no know, t-shirts and pants and everything keep them well covered basically and mm. uh, so i think all of this and maintain basic hygiene and cleanliness in the house you know use disinfectants clean the space properly put the pots outside make sure there is no water stagnation so of course immunity and cleanliness combination of both i think is going to help you basically right that's important and so how do you keep your house clean what are the various things that you do during monsoons to ensure the house is like you said putting pots outside the house and what are the other sort of hacks to keep your house clean during monsoon so for how to keep the house clean so first is that you know you have to uh, like during monsoons at least i put all the pots outside make sure that there is no water stagnation you know like because monsoons it's raining and then water collects and sometimes we ignore or we don't notice that you know it's collected and but if there is you know what stagnated water somewhere you know it's going to attract a lot of mosquitoes insects and and that's something that you don't want so make sure that the, the area is dry and clean then you can use uh, like uh, disinfectants like you get so many disinfectants now so you can pick whatever brand suits you and make sure that you're using that when i clean the house mm-hmm. then i add a little lemon grass to the water jo pani hota hai pocha ka pani we add a little lemon grass and like also lemon grass leaves no 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 the oil the lemon grass oil 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just one one spoon you can put to a whole bucket of water, and then it, you know it gives a good smell also, and it acts like a disinfectant. So you can do that. You can also add a little salt water, but this is not you know to remove negativity and everything from your house. You know, so keeps the space very positive and nice. So add a little salt to the water that you're using to clean your house, and uh, so these are a few things. Also, what you can do is you can add like door mats in front of your balcony. Mm. So because kids, you know, sometimes when it's raining, they like to see the rain, and they just you know they want to go out and they go to the balcony to see the rain, and then you know when they come out come inside, they get all those dirty <laughs> feet inside, and the whole house is uh, wet. So if you have like door mats. Then you know you can add a few, if you don't have door mats, then you can actually add a few additional door mats in you know before like just before they enter the house. So then they can actually wipe their feet before they enter. So I think all of this then if you have cracks or you know because uh, you know it happens during monsoon, especially you'll see that the wall gets dirty and it starts leaking. So for all that, don't like delay it and don't keep waiting to get it fixed. I think the sooner you do it, because you have to get it done at some point. Yeah. So you know, a lot of us, what we do is, "Ki theek hai, we call, we call the person, and he'll come and he'll do it. Not now, not today, tomorrow, tomorrow, and then it gets worse, worse, and it just becomes a huge project that you know you have to probably change the whole wall and paint the whole wall. So I think if you can intervene at an earlier stage and get it fixed, that would uh, really help. So I think these small, small things, if you can do, it really helps. And I am a cleanliness freak, so I always like you know when I see something also, I really want to clean it or get it clean. But yeah, it has to be clean. So I think, and when your kids watch you do all of this, no, they'll also start doing it. Yeah. Like my son does that now. If something will drop, he'll go run, get the pocha, and he'll start wiping it. So I think it's very important uh, to do these uh, few simple things, and it might sound a lot. now that i'm talking about it non stop but when you actually do it it's really easy it's just you know a matter of getting started and once you start you'll realize that it's easy and it's your house is going to look much better yeah. and very fresh no i'm going to try the lemongrass uh, hack that you gave me yes because it sounds also interesting yeah and that's something i learned from my mother in law she taught me and it's great i feel it the house smells nice and it just feels fresh exactly you don't need those oil burners through the day that i think <laughs> right but those are again great i think you know those oil burners and diffusers i'm a personal fan of these diffusers but just relaxes you instantly so i you know when i'm reading a book or something i usually love to have these diffusers next to me but okay. yeah that's just for you know relaxing and feeling mm. good because you're spending so much time indoors so you make your space look nice and relaxing add a little nice music and this is something that i tell all the parents in my community especially mothers i tell them that create a corner in the house mm. which you know like the minute you enter that corner you start feeling relaxed you know just put like some nice music little uh, you know some uh, you can have diffusers you can have nice candles and you can just sit and read a book and even if you're not reading just sitting in that spot is going to make you feel a lot better you know it completely unwinds you and relaxes you so i think it's very important that you create that small cozy corner you can have some family pictures there or a family album which you can just sit and flip i love watching old albums So I have like a huge, and I love to print pictures also. So I just keep all of that. We have to come on together with printed pictures. Yeah, it's, that's true. You know, like digital is great, but you know, like physical holder. The fact that you're holding those pictures and your every picture is like a memory. So every time you know, I feel like relaxing. I go to that corner and open an album, and I start uh, going through these pictures. That's so amazing. I think just make your indoor space very warm cozy nice clean and because you're going to spend most of your time indoors and uh, even if you're not I think home should be really nice and cozy but during monsoon since we are talking about monsoon specifically I feel it's very very important that you do these small small changes and uh, you'll see how productive and how happy you feel about your day that's very true in fact also for a lot of people today working from home these are simple tips that i think we all can use yes. to make our space nice neat clean happy environment to be sitting and even working i think right 
And Riddhi, like you mentioned, uh, there of course, dengue, malaria, they're all on the rise in the season. And a lot of times, uh, reason for hospitalization as well. So while you mentioned that, yes, wearing full sleeves, clothes are important. Are there any other things that you use to keep your family safe from mosquitoes? So, yes, so you can use like mosquito repellents. That is very important. I forgot to mention that. That is something that you definitely need to use. So, you know, I have this natural mosquito repellent that I prepare. And my mom thinks I'm crazy because I'm preparing it at home. But I still prepare it. So, it's very easy to prepare actually. You just need to mix apple cider vinegar Mm -hmm. and eucalyptus oil. You know, you just mix it in equal proportion. And then you add a little water to it. And then you shake it and put it in a spray bottle. And it it really is very, very effective, you know, and spray, put, spray it in the corners where you think, you know, mosquitoes can really enter mm-hmm. from because there's always these, there are always these yeah. corners, you know, ki se or, you know it's going to come from exactly. this door. And uh, of course, evening time, you should shut all the doors and windows. That is, you know, basic sense, you know, you have to do that. You know, if you are inviting the mosquitoes, then there is no way you can get uh, rid of them. Yes. So shut all the doors and windows in the uh, during evening and this natural mosquito repellent you should definitely prepare. It's easy and the best thing is there is no chemical or anything. And because all I have natural. a small baby all natural, yeah. And because I have a small baby at home, you know, it, I'm very relaxed when I'm using it. So I can use it with him around also. So it just uh, makes me feel good. So that and if your child is going out, use a mosquito patch. Like mm-hmm. either you can put some ointment or something, but I usually don't like to apply anything directly on the skin. Are they effective? Yes, I think it is. And in fact, you know, these days, like when you go for all these puja, kitten and all, and in, mm-hmm. if it's an outdoor setup, they'll give you a mosquito patch because if it's like mosquitoes. So the everybody in the audience gets a mosquito patch. And it is effective, you know, because uh, when I stepped, you know, I, I had some mosquitoes around me. The minute they gave me the patch, I put it on. I didn't feel like, you know, mosquitoes were attacking me. So definitely it is, I feel effective. And you have to take precaution. That's all that you can really do. Now, the effectiveness is something that, you know, only the product can guarantee and what product you're using. But uh, definitely, you know, basic precautions you have to take, like wearing covered clothes, using the mosquito patch, using mosquito repellents, keeping the space clean, shutting the doors and windows during the evening. Also, you know, if the doors are open and if the room is lighted, mosquitoes will come in 100%. So, you know, keep the lights also like low. And uh, so I think these small basic things, if you do, you can really keep the mosquitoes away. And take shower, you know, like a lot of people, you know, monsoon, they go, they come out. It's very important to take a bath, like, I feel, you know, because you're all sticky and uh, muddy and uh, just changing clothes, I think, is not good enough. It's always better that, you know, you just, even if it's not too long, just two, three, you know, buckets of, like, you know, just one bucket of water you can use and just take a quick shower. But do that because it's very important. That's right. And uh, one thing also, Riddhi, is that uh, parents usually get worried because uh, children tend to get flu during this uh, period of monsoons. So, and it's quite common across. So, how do you tackle it? What are the various things that you do? Uh, one, you, you spoke about all the precautions that you're taking, which is very important. But in case you see those symptoms coming in, what are those various things that you do to take further precautions right, and if right. it happens any homemade uh, recipes uh, or something that you would guide on right so see for flu I think like you know if it has happened then the best thing is to actually go for medical help uh, not like I don't see if the fever is there and if everything is there and you know that your child has been infected then I would recommend that you know you if you have some home remedies I usually go to the doctor if the fever is high then you can do that cold uh, cold water like you know and just put it like uh, on a towel dip it in uh, cold water and put the towel on your child's head and ice also you can use if your child has temperature but I would recommend that you seek medical advice for sure if your child has fever if as a precaution you're asking then you know give your child like the flu shot that I already mentioned Mm -hmm. that is very important because if your child has gotten the shot the chances are low 
of getting infected and if get if your child gets infected also it's not going to be very serious it's going to be mild so definitely that second uh, you know give vitamins multivitamins to your child whatever the doctor has prescribed you know vitamin d or uh, c is and now zinc also so yeah. whatever it is that the doctor has prescribed those vitamins you really have to give and if you are like somebody who is completely against medication and you don't want to give uh, you know vitamins like uh, supplements then you can do all these tulsi ka patta is great you know my mother used to give us tulsi and honey every day in the morning now i've stopped i think like after talking to you i'm suddenly reminded so i think i'll again start so she used to give us like you know four five leaves of tulsi ka patta and like one spoon of honey every day in the morning before we went to school so yeah. that is a great uh, way to actually uh, boost their immunity so that is something that you can give now if you're giving milk you can just add a little haldi you know turmeric to the milk so that would be a great way to prevent Uh, all this then the kara like i already mentioned you can give that and then uh, if you're making soup add like garlic ginger you know all these are uh, very very nice for your immunity so you can add that to the soup so you know kids if you directly give them something that's not tasty they'll not want to consume so you can try and put that in their food so then there's amarnath leaves okay so you where you can make like paratha so don't give like uh, uncooked vegetables during mm-hmm. monsoon because it's not very you know you're not sure so it's always better to cook it so amarnath leaves is great lot of people don't know about it it's called cholai in hindi so you can make really yummy parathas with that and it's very very good for immunity and um, really makes them strong and stuff so and good for you also not just for your child i feel for the whole family you can have then methi ka paratha so all these you know green you can add in your parathas then you can add beet beetroot parathas are also yum so in your naturally when you're eating food avoid ordering outside food occasionally it's fine to indulge but avoid as much as you can and if you're eating homemade healthy cooked food the chances of you getting infected will be very very uh, low so i think you should try and uh, you know basically small lifestyle changes so when it comes to prevention and preventing yourself and uh, living a healthy life uh, life you have to make these small lifestyle changes you know like short term pleasure can actually lead to long term pain so you know you go for short term uh, pain and long term pleasure and this is not even pain it's you know just picking the right option for yourself and avoiding junk all the time i would say don't order like sometimes i feel theek hai but every day if you're ordering pizza pasta and uh, outside food it's not good for your uh, system at all add a lot of fruits you know jamun cherries yeah. and all of this to your diet so the fruit. more fruits you eat it's great like fruits are amazing i feel so add a lot of fruits to your diet add vegetables if your child is not having veg you know directly i think during monsoons cooking everything is good so cook your food properly and then you can add it to parathas khichdi and vegetables and uh, yeah tulsi honey honey is great like you know i think honey everybody should have and it actually changes the molecular uh, thing composition of your blood and it just makes it you makes you feel very energetic so and this is something that i've noticed actually you know the days because i have uh, honey and lemon water every day in the morning but mm-hmm. sometimes when we are traveling i don't get it maybe yeah. it's a mental block i don't know what it is but if i don't get that honey lemon water in the morning i just feel that there is something wrong in my day <laughs> and you know i have to find honey and make sure that i get that in the morning so i think these small lifestyle changes and picking the right thing and feeding yourself the right food is very very important you know your body is like a temple so you treat it and keep it clean and the more you work for it the more it will work for you basically i think yeah covid also taught us that how important it is for all of us to stay healthy that's true. all the precautions that we've been taking we've forgotten <laughs> all the karas we were just too busy uh, in our lives right uh, we, we never actually went back to immunity these words like immunity kara all of these things have become just right. so important for us now yoga <laughs> yoga yoga is really picked up and it is an amazing uh, i would say if somebody likes to take it as a workout routine it's amazing it, it definitely calms your mind so right. it is one of the good good practices that um, i think everybody should try out once for themselves right that's amazing 
and also you know riddhi there are a lot of uh, these stomach infections and diseases uh, that some people can catch so how can the stomach diseases or infections can be avoided is there something else that you do apart from what you told us yeah so for stomach infection or if your child is having gastritis or something you know sometimes the stomach pains because you know of gastritis also especially when they are young so i think ajwain water is very effective so what you have to do is take some ajwain water boil it cool like you know boil it properly uh, till you know you'll see a light reddish brown color and then you actually sieve it and you let it cool down if you are having yourself it's good for adults also so if you are having it then uh, you can have it warm and hot for your kid you can actually cool it down a little and then you can feed them if it's very if your child is really small then with a the spoon if old enough then in a mug and it's very very good for their uh, stomach so if you feel that your child has a tendency for uh, stomach infection or gastritis then this ajwain ka pani is very good but don't overdo it okay like yeah, you know, like anything anything in excess is not good just once a day small uh, small mug like like for my son he's four so i give him in a small mug if you have a really tiny maybe just one or two spoons is also enough Hmm. so just everything in moderation you know tulsi is good but so i can't be eating tulsi all day yeah. so i think sometimes what we do is we overdo it anything in excess is bad so don't do that also what you can do is when you're having water you can just boil it a little so boil it and have it and uh, that also really helps sometimes you know kids when they travel to a different place they immediately get a stomach infection and used to happen to my son so every time he used to go to my in-laws house he used to his stomach used to pain and used to get a stomach infection was because of the water so we had to carry water from here and then you know it's a pain if you are staying there for so long you cannot really carry water so then we started boiling the water so you can boil the water and give it to your child and then you know that problem really uh, gets uh, resolved so i think these uh, small things you can do and i've spoken so much and you can uh, try and use all those different hacks i'm sure something will work and if it has happened don't rely on home remedies forever i think there is no harm in seeking medical help you know like to each his own but for me as a parent i feel you can't take all the precautions you can avoid it for as long as you want but if you feel that you know your home remedies are not working and your uh, you know some people also do chanting and uh, healing and all to you know so that is good you know definitely you know may be effective but if you don't know how to do it and if you are not being able to do it immediately please seek medical help i think don't like postpone it for so long that you know it becomes worse yeah no riddhi i am totally enjoying this conversation and i am sure a lot of our viewers are because these tips are really important and they, these are very easy to do tips so right. it's like sometime or the other you can keep following and doing some of these things throughout the monsoons i think and right. uh, and one more problem that i have uh, that i want to speak about and we keep hearing a lot for adults uh, so uh, these uh, the problems the dandruff problems that we see and the hair loss hair loss right. is become huge now now we know right. the brands also keep talking about it So, right. what the, uh, hair care tips or methods that we can use during monsoons? Like again, you you have that abundance of right. things in uh, things that we could do at home. So, what right. is it we could do at home to prevent right. hair loss and right. acne? So, your questions are actually reminding me of my mother because she used to do all of this with us, and I'm obviously carrying forward everything that she did. so of course for dandruff the first thing that you have to really make sure is that you your hair you know like your hair is dry and it's not very greasy because when it's very greasy sticky and oily that's when you know all the dust comes and sticks to your head and dandruff and everything happens if you're oiling your hair please don't leave it overnight oil it leave it for some time and then wash it like you know maximum i usually leave it for half an hour maximum don't like you know put oil and then sleep and you know some of us think that abhi to lagaye hain like oh we just wasted so much oil and now we are not going to wash it till tomorrow let it get absorbed all so the absorption don't overdo it yeah so all the absorption that really has to happen will happen in the first 30 minutes or if you really want to then maximum 1 hour but after that you should like you know go for a hair wash and then once you're done washing dry it 
because during monsoons i think it's okay to use a dryer because if you let naturally let it dry because the air is so humid and sticky after washing also you'll not feel that you washed your hair because you know it becomes more damp and sticky yeah so you can use a dryer actually to dry your hair that is one thing that you can do then you can put neem and haldi you know like turmeric and neem that is also very good it acts like an antiviral and has a lot of antioxidants very good for your hair so you can just make a paste put it on the scalp leave it for some time and then wash it then you can put aloe vera that's also great for your hair not just for the quality but also for the quantity you know it preserves like you know, prevents hair fall so you can put aloe vera so whatever is available around you for you know easily so i have aloe vera plants so i put aloe vera sometimes sometimes you can put dahi if you have mm-hmm. eggs in the house you can put egg you know all these natural things are very good for your hair and then my mother used to put methi that's very good for your hair you know like methi and you put it in water and you boil it and then you use that water when you are taking a shower you know two three mugs with that methi water and then you normally wash your hair so that's also very good lot of people put onion ka pani like you know mm-hmm. onion ka ras and now you have shampoos also that are using yeah. onion so that onion ka ras is very very good for your hair fall so and this i've actually my mother has tried and it has worked because when i was young i got typhoid for almost 2 months and i lost a lot of hair when i had typhoid like i was almost bald from this area and it was quite bad and all she used to do because my mother is also she has got some allergy with doctors like she doesn't like going to the doctors at all she wants to do all this home remedy only so she kept putting that onion ka pain it used to stink and i used to hate the whole experience and that's why i probably remember it so well because it has a very strong smell so if you are going for that it's not going to be easy that's a disclaimer but um uh, but if it's really effective because i don't know if it was that or naturally it came back but it did come back like it was like everything had gone so i think that onion uh, juice hack also really worked but again don't leave it for the night because nobody can sleep and you'll not be able to sleep so just for half an hour one hour just leave it and then wash it yeah so i think these small hacks i think all of this you can see what works for you what is more easy for you and then uh, do that We see that you have lovely hair, so I'm sure if it's working, these are good tips and tricks to use. Yeah, and anti-dandruff shampoos also, of course. Like if you feel that you're really busy, you have a very busy life, and all of this is challenging and difficult, then get a nice anti-dandruff shampoo. There's so many. So pick pick something that is well suited to your hair, whether it's dry. I've never been able to actually understand my whether my hair is dry or sticky or oily. Sometimes it's dry. Sometimes I feel it's very oily. but yeah go to somebody and they'll help you actually understand what is well suited for your hair and then you can also get that also the weather at times it makes it dry or sometimes oily yeah so i think it plays an important role out there yes yeah. so really one more question uh every family has their unique way to unwind so what right. about you during monsoons uh what are the various things that you do indoors like you said moving out or maybe enjoying in the rain so what right. are the interesting things that you guys do and we could take some tips from there too <laughs> right so we are actually a family that loves to be indoor other than my son who always wants to be outdoor but otherwise my husband and i both are like you know indoor people like to spend time indoor so we play a lot of board games like you know like both me and my hus- my husband and i also play a lot of board games and now we have so many board games for me and we play like board games together and there are such interesting board games for 3 year old 4 year old kids it's just amazing and it's fun for adults also you know like i don't get bored when i'm playing those games with me so there's there's this game that we play called clean hand dirty hands and it's very nice and there are many games there are, there are board games for phonics and sight words and i feel it's a great way to entertain and educate your kids at the same time you know your child is going to learn so much through these board games and you will feel very content as a parent and you're engaging so you're doing engaging entertaining and educating all three at the same time so board games are great then uh, both all of us like to read so we spend a lot of time reading whenever we have free time then sundays we watch movies together 
and sundays my husband also likes to cook sometimes so otherwise i'm cooking he's uh, eating but on sundays he likes to cook so sometimes he cooks we watch movies together then gardening so i love going to the nursery so sometimes i go to the nursery on sundays and uh, so all of this and anything that you really helps you relax and feel good you can do that with veer we do a lot of lego also he loves uh, veer my son sorry and we do a lot of lego and uh, i think all of these things you know whatever uh, really makes you feel relaxed and good and this is going to be very personal to you as a couple or a family you know like everybody has different preferences and mm. but yeah if you find something interesting on my list please feel free to try and you can do a lot of role play with kids you know that's also a lot of fun like uh, now especially because kids are not going to school i do a school role plays with my son you know i tell him that you know i'm going to this is school there's a separate room where he does his online classes so i tell him no from the other room we do role play that you know now you have to go to school get ready pack your bag pack your lunch yeah. so that he gets that whole feel that he's actually going to a physical school and then once it's over i'll be like okay i'll come to pick you up <laughs> so you know like really? something like that you just uh, make it creative make it fun and and also the good thing about it is you don't have to sit with your child when he's doing it because you're just going to go pick him up so <laughs> i in this game i've told him that you know i'm not allowed to stay you can attend your class and then i can just come and pick you up so now he's understood and now it's because of gamified the whole process he's also more easy about it so yeah. these are uh, easier also when he goes back to school because otherwise yes. the kids they're so used to having parents all the time around them so it's going right. to be so easier for him to adapt when the things are normal and people start right. children start resuming the school so that's it right and also when a parent is sitting next to the child there's so much pressure on the parent my child is not answering what are they teaching i have to revise this with my child so you know it was happening with me in the beginning you know i was like okay mom is teaching this i better revise this with my son and i better do this with him and then i you know sat down and i was like you know what if you were going to a real school you know i would have not no received all this from the teacher and i would have just you know been very relaxed about it so i consciously made the decision of not sitting because if i'm sitting then you know i have this tendency of repeating it and it can be annoying for him because he's already listening to it and then now i'm sitting and repeating it for him yeah. so i feel that it's good for my mental health also that i'm not sitting next to him when he is doing his online classes absolutely i think that's a great one because i see a lot of parents talking complaining and saying that it's become difficult for them too and uh, of course it's like when your child goes to school you don't know what's happening there it's their own right. environment so maybe it's a great way to create an environment uh, especially i think for kids who are a certain age for a very young kid you have to yeah you have to parents have to be there for them because they've not gone to a formal school yet so they don't know right. how it works yeah and even with like little older kid depends on the child like you know every child is different different temperament so you have to actually uh, customize your behavior based on your child's uh, temperament and their action so if you feel that if you're not around your child is not sitting at all then you don't really have a choice but to actually find a different way of doing it or sitting with your child so yes yeah. yeah, so it depends on the parent child combination actually great and with the any other special tips or tricks that you would like like to give our youth uh, our audience like staying indoor importance of cleanliness during more so i'm just going to quickly summarize everything that i've said is that stay indoor make sure your environment is clean make sure your body is clean because just the environment being clean is not good enough you have to be very clean make sure you're wearing clean clothes properly drying your clothes ironing your clothes you know that is also very important otherwise there's this weird smell during monsoons that you get from your clothes so very important that you dry it properly if it's outside it's not happening put it under a fan your room might look weird for some time but at least your clothes will be fresh and the smell won't be there so wear dry fresh clothes then i have these whatever small immunity hacks that i've shared with you you can try those tulsi honey honey is very important if you're not having honey please start having honey and uh, i think all the honey people should really thank me you know i'm going to sell more honey if people watch this so <laughs> have a lot of honey tulsi then warm water and uh, avoid ordering outside food 
and I've spoken so much. I'm just thinking if I'm missing out something. Um, use insect repellents and make the repellent that I discussed so then there are no chemicals and it's not harmful at all. And um, add lemongrass to the water. So, you know, you do all of this and I think you're set and stay happy. Most important, the easiest way to fall ill is to be unhappy and to stress and uh, to take too much tension. So don't do that because if you are do taking stress and if you are unhappy, then no matter what you do, something will happen. <laughs> so it's very important that you're uh, happy and you're creating that happy environment in your house. If you're doing all, if you're happy and if plus you're doing all of this, then uh, the chances of you getting uh, a viral or a flu or anything is going to be very, very low. So I think that's the tip. Uh, it's like a summary of what I discussed, basically. It, it was a wonderful conversation, Riddhi. Thank you so much for sharing all of these easy ways <laughs> to keep our families fit, healthy, and most importantly, safe during these uh, monsoons. And I would say to all our viewers, we know that you're enjoying the monsoon showers, but do ensure that you keep your family safe. Use these tips that Riddhi has just shared with us. Uh, because they're really interesting, I would say. And I'm sure they're going to help us. And enjoy every bit of the season. So stay happy, stay safe and stay protected. <laughs>